Guys, now let's explain what is substitution effect and income effect. Uh, when the price of good X decreases, there is a substitution effect that shifts consumption toward more good of X. What does it mean? If the prices of uh, some good X decreases, what happens? You will buy more than that good, right? Uh, if the prices of that good increases, but your income is the constant, what happens? Your purchasing power in terms of that good decreases, so you purchase less of that good. Means that substitution effect always increase consumption of good in fallen price, as I explained it. But we also have income effect. Income effect, in contrast to substitution effect, can increase or decrease the consumption of good in fallen price. We already recall that covered the topics of normal good and inferior good. In normal good, uh, income effect increases the consumption of the fallen prices. In inferior goods, this is vice versa. So guys, based on this analysis, we can describe three possible scenarios. Scenario one, here S dot E is the substitution effect and I dot E is the income effect. If both substitution effect and income effect are positive, means that they are greater than zero, consumption of that good will increase. Second scenario, if substitution effect is greater than zero, but income effect is negative, is less than the zero, but the income effect is smaller than the substitution effect. In this case, consumption of good will increase. Scenario third, if substitution effect is positive, but income effect is negative, plus the income effect, the degree of income effect is greater than the substitution effect. In this case, consumption of X decreases. So this is actually, uh, if the substitution effect is positive, income effect would make sense. So if it's smaller than, degree is smaller than the substitution effect, they will together uh, increase the uh, consumption of X. But the, if the income effect is negative, but this is the greater than the substitution effect, it will decrease the prices. So guys, until now, I have uh, several times mentioned the normal goods and inferior goods. I have explained their differences. I said that in normal goods, income effect is positive. We also discussed that in contrast to normal goods, in inferior goods, income effect is negative. But in a specific good, maybe inferior for some ranges of income, but then became a normal good in other ranges of income. Very interesting, right? It means that in some ranges of income, this is normal good or this is inferior good, but in other ranges of income, it changes its type. It changes to normal good. So, for example, for many of us, commercial airline travel is normal good. It means that when your income rises, you travel more frequently through uh, commercial airline travel. But imagine that now you became, in one day, you became a super millionaire. So what will happen? You will no longer use commercial airline and now you will use like a private jets. Okay, so it means that if you are like a considerably wealthier, so you will no longer use the commercial line. So commercial airline travel is normal good in some degree of wealth. But if you became a super wealthier, commercial airline travel became inferior goods. Guys, now uh, I'm going to explain you two testable uh, points, Giffen good and Veblen goods. Uh, what is Giffen good? You may heard, most probably you may heard about this new uh, term first time. Giffen good is the, like, first of all, theoretical concept. I just summarized all the features of Giffen goods and Veblen goods uh, in separate points, so pay attention to them. Uh, Giffen good is the theoretical, theoretical concept. So in real world, we don't have any given goods. Given goods means that when the price is low, demand decreases. When the price, when the price of goods is low, the demand for this product decreases. So uh, given goods are inferior goods. Negative income effect actually exceeds the positive substitution effect. That's why we can say that they are inferior goods. Interestingly enough, they have 
upward sloping curve because in all cases we know that demand curve is like downward sloping but in given goods they are upward sloping curve uh, so as i said in given goods the lower price increases the demand that's why they are positively slow but they have an upward slope and another important point given goods violate the theory of consumer choice guys now webling goods what's webling goods webling goods in contrast to given goods are not inferior uh, they also have an upward sloping demand curve but here the higher price means increases demand we know that in higher prices actually demand should decrease but here like imagine brand new Gucci bag in these cases what happens in these cases the high prices is like a more status for people the higher prices people tend to buy more like this brand new Gucci bag because it's like a high fashionable status but like you may ask that it should have some end higher prices demand increase higher prices it means that if it will have a 10 million thousand dollar it means that demand will increase no of course they have some uh, end point and remember that guys uh, Webland goods does not violate the theory of consumer choice and it's not the theoretical they, as I bring example that's why they are a practical not uh, theoretical like a given goods now the first part diminishing marginal return first of all I would like to mention that there are four types of factors of production remember this term factors of production because you will encounter this world through the topic or through the uh, tests what is factors of production this is the factors that we use to produce goods what we have we have a land we have a labor from unskilled labor to like a top managers we have a capital capital may have a physical capital or plant equipment or financial capital can also we call it as a capital and materials simply raw materials together then we produce goods so guys very important point is that imagine that given amount of capital you just have a one worker and with one worker you produce some good imagine you add or hire additional worker so now you have a second worker in this case your product your output will increase so now let's be a more aggressive you hire a third you hire, hire a fourth you hire a fifth worker what happens in a given amount of capital after a while adding one more worker will increase the total product but the product of the final worker will be less than previous one so the product of the final added people this is the marginal product so marginal product of the worker is the additional output produced by adding one more worker okay so what is diminishing marginal productivity diminishing marginal productivity means that as i said that after adding several workers the productivity of the last worker will be less than its previous one but still it will be positive uh, so look at this graph guys here we have a three points the uh, actual two points point a and point b you see that until point a when we increase quantity of labor total output what happens you see this is like an upward sloping it increases it means that marginal product is increasing as the marginal product is increasing output of the last worker increase and that's why your total product is upward sloping but what happens after the point a after the point a the marginal product is still positive still positive but less than previous one in this case production function will increase but in decreasing rate okay finally in in point b the marginal product is negative means that you add one more worker but it's inefficient okay uh, you you may say that how it can be inefficient please uh, remember that here's the assumption that we take or we consider given amount of capital so after point b additional workers bring negative product ne negative marginal product that's why our production function decreases guys 
Diminishing marginal productivity of uh, labor is also called diminishing marginal return. It means that return to the capital. So they can be uh, used interchangeably. Another important terms that you may very frequently encounter not only in CFA level 1 exam but also in CFA level 2, CFA level 3 or in other worlds or the economic curriculums are short run and long run. So what is the short run? In economics we define the short run for a firm as the time period over which uh, some factors of production are fixed. It means that in some period of time, uh, you may not instantly increase your land. You may not instantly increase the plant in your land. Okay, they are fixed. But in the long run, all the variables, all the factors of productions are variable. You can change it. So, uh, for example, the firm can let its lease expire or sell its equipment, purchase additional area additional land area or sell additional land area so in the long in the long run you may change everything that's why all the variables are not fixed are variable uh, yes guys i uh, this is the end of the video i hope you enjoyed and understand everything we will explain the shutdown and break even under the perfect and imperfect competition in our next lessons